Th- this this question's um I, I actually threw this right before we went live because there's some big thing there's a big thing that happened and I just don't think it's getting any traction. People just do not understand and it's a common misconception about Cardano and transactions per second. And I and I saw this video. I know you had to have seen it. Uh, the cascade of NFTs in one transaction. So I, what I wrote here is I recently saw a single Cardano transaction contain over a thousand NFTs in that one transaction, which could never be seen on any other blockchain. Why do you think so many people believe Cardano's TPS is so low compared to other blockchains? Is it intentional misinformation by con- competing chains? Or is it just a matter of general lack of blockchain understanding as it relates to how Cardano is different from the rest? Yeah, I think we've, we have an analogy for this. It, we ran into this with computer processors and graphics cards um, back in the 2000s. So forever, if you're Zilog or AMD or Intel or whatever, you were always judged by clock speed. And we remember the ads like the Pentium 4 at 3 gigahertz and and now it's 3.2 gigahertz and these types of things. We're as consumers trained gigahertz, gigahertz, gigahertz. So we don't really understand under the hood how the processor works. We just know faster number better. That's your consumer training. It's kind of like cars and horsepower, like 450 horsepower, 500 horsepower. It's like, okay, but is horsepower the only consideration whether you're fast car, agile car, good car? No. I mean, my Escalade has the same horsepower as my Huracan radically different driving experience okay so there's there's obviously some more to the story than just a number so in the 2000s we started building computer processors that had much lower clock speeds like the centrino was two gigahertz but the performance would exceed a 3.4 gigahertz processor and cardano is kind of that same situation where you have this accounts based model and it's very sequential in thinking and so the only way you speed up that engine is increasing tps then we have a different system which is you know, extended UTXO, what we do, well, you could have one transaction be 5,000 transactions hypothetically inside the accounts based model. It's almost like you think of a highway and you can have a single passenger car versus a bus. Now they're both vehicles. They're both occupying a space in the highway, but the bus can have dozens of people on it. The, the, the sedan can have four people or five people inside of it comfortably. So they're very different things. And so we're, and the problem is, is if, if you're comparing buses to cars and everybody thinks there's only one passenger in each, obviously they'd say, Hey, the car is better, but there's more to the story. So I think the big issue is that there's a, a misunderstanding because consumers were taught. The only thing that matters is TPS. They don't understand we're playing a different game or buses for TPT. You're, you're loading that bus up with lots of people and uh, we're putting lots of buses on the road. And so what you do instead is you visualize it. And th- that's why I show extendedutxo.org again and again and again, because then they get it instantly right. from a picture. They say, oh, my God, one transaction had all that stuff happening. Yeah, I interacted with MinSwap and I issued NFTs and I moved value and that all happened in one trend. You can't do that in an accounts model. So they instantly get it that the bus is getting full and they understand that you can get bigger and bigger buses over time and you can get more buses over time. So this is going to be the dominant model for all the things that need to be done. Now there's all kinds of other things like the availability of layer two solutions and roll-ups and these t- much better in the extended UTXO world than the accounts world. But consumers aren't going to get that and you have to create a different metric. So how did they solve it with CPUs and GPUs? They stopped talking about gigahertz and they created like 3D Mark and these other benchmarks. 12 cores and 16 yeah. cores, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so they had a number and the number represented real world performance of the network. So we need to create a throughput metric, just like we did with EDI to measure decentralization. Then you can apply that throughput metric for real world applications on a slot, Solana, Ethereum, these other guys. And then you can actually always give a pair. So this performance at this level of decentralization. So if they have better performance, it might be the case that they have significantly less decentralization inside the system. And then what you do is you always put a reference. You put Amazon Web Services or Azure or something there. And you say, okay, look, at they have the best performance, but they're completely centralized. You know, So, so then people understand, oh, okay, if I'm in blockchain land, I should probably be above this threshold of decentralization. And then we'd always be number one on the, uh, on the metrics. You know, if you look at that pairing, but you can never compare one way or the other. Uh, you know, you, you have to always take into mind, this is your level of performance with this level of centralization inside the system. 
And I think that's honestly, you said it perfectly, like create a new metric that people can start looking at. Even if Cardano is the first to implement it or coin the term, I think that's kind of what Cardano is here for in a lot of ways. You're, you're not putting all of the work in your academic approach to building out this blockchain, you know, just to be like everybody else. It's obvious that there's a lot more going on. And I think that that is the struggle we had all these years where certain metrics define the capabilities of a particular blockchain. And now Cardano is going so far out of that paradigm that people just don't really, it's not clicking with people how it's just different entirely. And, and yeah, you know, it's like, uh, just like that. It's almost like having a thousand cores in the, in, in one CPU kind of thing. You know, it's right. just, it's a completely different metric altogether that I still don't think is resonating with people yet. And, and also your software has to be written to take advantage of those thousand cores. This was another big issue when we went multi-core was that if you were using single core software on a multi-core processor and it was not written to take advantage of it, it actually in many cases be slower than uh, than the single core processors that they were competing with. So people are like, I just bought this chip. It's got four processors in it. How come I'm not seeing any performance improvement? Well, you have to write the software differently. So Cardano applications, for example, have to be written to fully take advantage of extended UTXL. And in many cases, when they do, they get a 10x in, in uh, throughput and they get a, a, a 10x reduction in transaction size for these types of things. So if they write it the very naive, stupid way, you may end up inadvertently actually clogging the pipes. You know, and uh, and so that's another thing as a Cardano user, you have to pay attention to uh, the dApps because it's not just branding and marketing. Some of them under the hood are so uh, are substantially better optimized uh, to use the paradigm. And it's the same for consumers. And you know, we saw this like antivirus software where if it was only written for a single core, it took like four hours for your Norton to run or whatever. But then when they started actually taking advantage of multi-core, then suddenly your AV would run in 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that. And so, so why would you buy the software that runs in four hours when it's doing the same thing in 15 minutes. So use dApps that are optimized with Plutus V2 or Aiken or a modern language and using a modern approach. And almost always you'll get a much better user experience than if you use a dApp that's using the legacy stuff that uh, we launched with.